Hey there, Victor here. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to customize a template in Create Studio Pro. At the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to create your own version of the template, tailored to your own needs. So let's begin. As soon as we open Create Studio Pro, we have the home page. On the left side panel, we have Templates section. I open Templates and we have here Category Classification menu that will help browse the templates by a certain category. In the search bar up here, you can type in keywords of interest to find a template for a certain niche. You can also sort templates by the aspect ratio. With the Mute tab, you can choose to mute the templates while you watch the preview. There is also a menu to sort displayed templates by new, popular, or in alphabetical order. If you start any of the templates as your favorites, you could also filter them by activating this star right here. Create Studio Pro has no less than 154 landscape aspect ratio templates, 227 square aspect ratio templates, and 128 vertical ones. That makes a total of no less than 509 templates at the time I'm recording this video and still counting. The team is constantly working on new templates that are added each month in the templates library to make it even easier for us to create outstanding video projects for our own use or for our clients. If you are on a standard plan with Create Studio Pro, chances are that you won't have that many unlocked templates available for you to use and customize. I am an All Access Pass member, so I have everything included in my subscription. I have no restriction, I have it all. All assets, all characters, all effects and I will have all they will add in the future. If you're not an All Access Pass member but you wish to sign up and want to get it all, I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to go and upgrade. For today's example, I will choose to customize this photograph portfolio template. I didn't choose this one just randomly. I wanted to choose a template a little bit more complex to give me the opportunity to demonstrate more than one or two images how to be replaced inside the template. On a first impression you might think that editing a template with your own images is super simple and you just click on the replace button and change few pictures and that's it. But let me tell you that it requires a little bit more than that. In some cases you might need to go and adjust the image group to fit your own image aspect ratio and for that I have decided to make this tutorial. We can see that this template is in the local business category. It has four 44 seconds duration and it is available only in landscape aspect ratio. To open and create a project with this template, click here on use this template and by doing so it will download all the assets and will import them in the project timeline. After you get inside the project, you see that the timeline is populated with grouped scenes. You can also see the total time duration for this project right here. This one is about 40 44 seconds. Now, to start customizing the project, you simply go and position the cursor right here over this first scene group and make sure you click on it to have it selected and by doing so you will get this quick action container up here on the right side where you will see all the elements that are inside the selected group and you can quickly make changes to everything in that group. Notice that each image has a replace button on a side and you can go through all images and replace any of them that you want to replace. Having these small thumbnails at times it might be difficult to tell what image is. So to see it better you only need to click here on this image text and you will get this image settings panel here on top. From this panel you can make some adjustments, you can replace image, you can change the opacity by unlocking this lock you can also change the X and Y scale for this image and you can also input certain position values when you need to. I personally rarely use this panel. I go inside the group directly to that picture to do the adjustments in its properties. But if you want to use that, just know that there is this option as well. And 
it is very helpful when you want to see the big picture behind the little thumbnail. If I go inside each group, I can see how many images, how many text elements, so on and so forth. So let's go back from the very beginning and if I click on the replace button of the first image, I will get this media library open here on the left. These are the images that are in this project already. I will go all the way down to reach the folder I have created with images I have imported to replace the ones from the template. You have here the project media. On the right there is a global folder and to add a new folder you go down here and click on this folder icon to create a new folder. And the new created folder will be right at the bottom of the other project files. If you right click on the folder you can rename or delete, I will rename this one my folder. After you have your new folder created, you can click on it and enter inside the folder and import your own media here. I go back now and I will choose this image to replace the first image from the first scene. This one fit just well, I don't need to do any adjustments to the new image. Let's go on and change the second image. I will look for an image to replace it. I will choose this one. And this one fit as well. No need for any further adjustments. Heading for the third image in this template to replace it, I'll just pick one picture from the media folder. For this image, I'd like to make some small adjustments. So I go on and open the group and there is another group in here, so I'll open this one as well. In this group, we find several other groups that each contains one image and all together make this master group. I am working on the third image, so I need to go inside the third group in here and once I am in this group I can work directly on the image. Let's say I just need to drag the image down a little bit to have its top edge aligned with the top edge of the canvas. Once I finish modifying my image inside its group, heading up here on this blue tab menu, I can go back. Each of these tabs right here represents the groups that we just entered. So I'll go back from one group to another until I get back to the main timeline where I have all master groups. From here I move on to the next image I want to replace, so I'll pick one of the pictures I imported. Once I did that, I go and open this master group and here I I have another group so I'll open this one as well and here I need to work on this fourth group so I go inside this one. Here I have the image that I need to work on and this one just like the previous one only needs a little bit of repositioning. Again I use these tabs up here to go back from one group to another. I go on with the next image and I just quickly replace it with one of my pictures. Now I move on to the next master group. In this group I have a picture of the photographer of this portfolio that I need to change. And this is an image with a transparent background, so I will also need a transparent background image. First let's pick our image and replace the original one. As you can see here my new picture has a background. To remove the background of this picture. I go on and open the groups one by one to reach the actual picture. Once I got inside the group where the picture lives, I select it and with a right click I get these options and I select remove background. On late July this year a new feature update was introduced to us by Create Studio. One click background removal for us to make possible to remove the background of our images automatically with one click. Just right click on an image and select remove background. Attention! This feature is included in All Access Pass. 20 removals per month. All other users can buy credits. The reason why this is based on credits even for All Access Pass members is because Create Studio Team is using an external service which charges them for each image conversion. That is why they currently can't offer this as a free service. If you're not an All Access Pass member yet, I strongly recommend you become one. It's absolutely worth it. Follow the link in the description box below to find out how you can unlock All Access Pass benefits 
As soon as I click on that option, a prompt pops up to let me know the number of credits I have left and if I want to proceed with the action. So I click yes, I go on and use one credit and voila! With only one click, you can easily remove your picture background. No need to search for or use any other software. And if I zoom in, you can see that this integration is doing an amazing job. You don't need to do any more adjustments on the edges. Once I have that solved, I go back to the main timeline and you can see that I have a different guy here and the scene it plays perfectly. Moving on now to the next scene, I select to replace the first image on the left. I go in my files and let's pick a picture to replace it. I'll take this one here and as you can see this doesn't fit well. I'll go in and open group by group to get to that image and make the adjustments. This is the image right here and this is also a group. So let's open this group as well and in this last group I have my image. I double click on the image and by doing so I can edit the mask of this image by moving this mask upwards. Having the mask position just as I want it, on the upper side of my picture I click on the side and the mask fixes that upper side and now I can drag the image to be centered. And now if I go back from one group to another, you can see that I managed to edit this one image container to show properly. I will just repeat the same steps and process for the next few image replacements, so I gonna just fast forward on this part to move on to the next example. On this next scene, I have these vertical images I will just quickly replace with images in my folder and I will make no adjustments for these two as they fit just fine. Now I move on to this next image right here and for this example let's say I want to play scene a different aspect ratio image and I'll choose this one. At first sight it looks like it fits but I will go inside groups one by one to get to the image and first I will double click to resize the image mask to fit the original image. I click on a side so the mask will close and now I need to go here on the right where I have these group settings and I click here to manually edit the group boundaries. You can see that the group boundaries have a vertical aspect ratio so I'll just drag the right side and the left side to fit my image. I can go back here and click on finish editing. Now I go back in the previous group and notice here that I need to edit this group's boundaries as well to fit my image. So I scale up the image a little bit and after that I go on and edit the margins of this group. To exit the editing mode of the group boundaries you can also click on the side and the editing mode closes. After I exit the group you can see that I need to adjust the size of the image so I'll just do that by dragging from the corners and I move it here like this. I exit this group as well and if I zoom in you can see that my image doesn't have the white border anymore, the one that this picture has here. So I go back and open group by group to get to the image group. Here in this image group I have this square shape. This square shape is the white background behind the picture that makes that white border. Now I extend this left side a little over the image margin and then the right side here as well. I go on to extend the bottom edge too and finishing here with the top edge. Let's exit this group and you can see now that there is a white border representing a kind of a passepartout. I go back to the main timeline and I just want to review what has been changed so far. Moving on, I go here to this image and click here to replace it with another picture and let's pick this one. I think I would want to pick another image. Let's pick a picture that has a vertical aspect ratio. Just to have another chance to repeat the editing tasks of modifying an image inside a scene group. I think this one is a vertical image. You can see that it doesn't fit well. I'll go on and open the group I have here 
I have here another group I need to open. I extend the timeline and a faster way to select the right image group, I just go on the canvas and click on the image I want to edit. Once I've done that, the image is selected on the timeline and now I can open the group. Here I have another group that needs to be opened and inside this group I have this rectangle shape which is the white frame of the picture and above I have the image group. Another way to open this image group is to double click right on the image here on the canvas to get inside that group. So this is the destination to reach the image I want to edit. At times going from group to group might seem a little bit confusing. I recommend going in, opening groups one by one until you reach that one image that needs to be edited and then going back in the same manner to be sure that all the other groups fit with with the new edits you just made to your image. So I'll zoom out a little bit and with a double click I open the image mask. I'll need to drag this edge to fit the edges of the picture. I click on a side to exit the mask and now I also need to edit the group boundaries. To do that I go here on the right and click to edit manually. Now this is not the image mask again, the one that I just edited, but the group boundaries that need to be edited to fit the new image. Again, I click on a side to exit the manual editing of the group. Once I've done that, I go one step back to the previous group and you can see that it doesn't fit anymore with my new picture. For this group too, I'll click on edit manually and this time I must make sure the group boundaries fit the image and the white frame beneath. I click here finish editing and now if I select that white frame, notice that this one too needs to be adjusted. Once I've done that, I go one step back to the previous group and again this group doesn't fit anymore to my new edit. I go on and manually edit this group's margins as well and I can go back to the previous group now. Here you can see that my image is way too big now, but I only need to resize it a little bit. I just grab one corner and drag it to scale the whole image with everything that it is inside all those groups that I just went through moments ago. This is the reason why in a template and in any project it is mandatory to envelope everything in groups so now when I need to scale it down I just recite everything inside one time. But sometimes not everything works perfectly. Or it might happen to you to miss something like here on this bottom edge of my new image. You can see that the white frame it is only visible on the right and left sides but it is not visible on the bottom edge. So I go back in and open the group and open the next one as well. In this group I have this rectangle shape that represents the white frame of the image and somehow it is not well adjusted to make that white border. So I just need to adjust it to fit and right here on the top edge I'll do the same. Now if I go back and zoom in a little bit, notice that I have my problem fixed. Going back to the main timeline and if I play this part you can see that I have my vertical image replacing the one before. For my next image to edit I will follow the same steps from the last example I just finished and I'll just fast forward a little bit this process to get to an interesting part that I just want to show you in this video. You might have noticed that this template has monochrome photos. Notice my picture here is in full color yet if I go one step back to the previous group, the picture has that monochrome look. This is because to the image group has been applied some effects. If I go here, I can see the added effects and I find here two effects applied to this group. So I click here on filters effect and you can see that the one applied is the one highlighted. If I need, I can select none and the image will have no filter and if I select the color correction effect I will get these settings that will allow me to adjust some of the most important color channels of the image. So I will go back and apply the sepia filter. You can always remove the applied effects by clicking on this X sign right here. I'll quickly go back to the main timeline and one last editing I want to show it is text editing. So. I just go here and I'll change this text 
with my own by simply typing in the text I want. I hope you had the necessary patience to follow this tutorial till the end and I really hope it will be useful for those of you who struggle with editing complex templates in Create Studio Pro and that this video brought some more light on how to edit images inside a group. If you did watch till the end, I want to thank you. If you want to see more tutorials, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified for the upcoming tutorials. And if you have any suggestions for what you think my next tutorial should be about, please leave your thoughts in the comments box below. Until next time, have fun creating!